uh, at the moment, uh, I think we have more than uh, uh, 160 participants at the starting of the program. Having more than 150, 160 participants is an indication that uh, today also probably we may cross uh, 250. Anyway, uh, good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I have switched off uh, my camera because uh, you know sometimes it may eat up the bandwidth. Uh, to introduce uh, myself, uh, most of you know me very well. I am a member in the uh, BIS, uh, some of the technical committees of uh, ETD20. Uh, actually, today. Uh, two more uh, uh, participants, attendees uh, from the same committee, Mr. Heyman Sali and Mr. Goswami. Uh, I could see them uh, on the list of uh, uh, participants. So we are very much actively involved into the drafting of uh, the National Electrical Code at the moment. Uh, I'm also a member in the IEC TC64, which is uh, the basic electrical safety, uh, uh, low voltage electrical safety and protection against electric shock, the global standard, then TC81 lightning protection standard and the TSC 37A SPDs. Uh, some of, I'm working with some of the working groups of uh, these committees. So today actually, uh, during the first and the second uh, program, we discussed uh, some of the issues uh, today i would like to take it up to a further uh, in a different uh, to a different level uh, and i would like to explain what uh, the other countries are trying to do <clears throat> basically this information what developed countries are trying to do is uh, from uh, uh, my colleagues those who are working with uh, the iec technical committees from other nations because whenever there is a meeting we used to discuss about uh, what they do in their country to achieve uh, and most of the time uh, most of uh, the uh, uh, engineers involved in the electrical safety they are worried about uh, the fire accidents especially fire due to short circuit accidents happening in india uh, first, I would like to start with uh, a statement. Uh, you, all of us must understand that uh, uh, there is no shortcut for achieving electrical safety. Why I made this statement is, a lot of uh, engineers used to ask, uh, can you suggest me some product which will solve all my problem? Can you make a black box and give to me so that my problems are solved? Can you make a magic box which will eat away all the, uh, you know, the dirty problems which I am getting from the uh, electricity supplier side. So my magic box must have uh, uh, internet of things. It, uh, it must send me an SMS in case of a problem. It has to call back to me in case of a problem. And this, will give, this should give a very, very clean output so that uh, all my electrical installation is safe. So, there are uh, propagandas happening in the market saying that this uh, such magic devices can protect uh, the whole thing, which is absolutely a big mistake. Magic devices and uh, devices which claims to protect from overcurrent, short circuit, earth fault, surges, shock, fire, and all the known electrical safety faults. Number one, this is not uh, practically possible. And uh, number two, it's illegal. Why it's illegal? Because uh, in order to have a good electrical installation, we are supposed to follow the rules and regulations. Why this is not practical? Of course, this is not practical because uh, the engineer should understand the methods to handle overcurrent, short circuit, earth fault, surges, shocks, overvoltage, fire, and all these things. It's not uh, about one problem. It's a combination of a lot of problems. And with uh, one magic box, you cannot solve all these problems. And uh, I presume that this magic box very soon will start creating problem, which will be an additional headache for uh, people. So don't follow such things, strictly follow the regulations and the rules and the code of practices. So for example, regulation 12 of the Central Electricity Authority, CEA regulation says uh, you should follow the code of practices for uh, wiring or the installation and follow the Indian standards, the products used must uh, follow the Indian standards and the electrical wiring should follow the code of practice. Uh, this is the straightforward method. Follow the rules and regulations. Don't go with the shortcuts because shortcuts can never help you. One such shortcut device is uh, uh, becoming a real headache nowadays. I'm getting a lot of phone calls and asking about uh, what is this digital 
grounding device digital grounding is uh, you know it's a plastic box or probably a metal box but it has got a big bus bar as you can see here and uh, the manufacturer claims that uh, you connect all your devices to bus bar your uh, problems with respect to earthing your problems with respect to earth electrode resistance neutral to earth voltage surges lightning reverse lightning all these problems are solved sometimes the words which they use the manufacturer use itself you know are some some a kind of uh, uh, new words in electrical engineering which i am never uh, heard of so basically this is uh, uh, really a problematic product uh, if you are using such kind of a product very soon you will be in trouble uh, we have uh, experienced in uh, some of the industrial premises large uh, corporate companies uh, in order to avoid the neutral to earth voltage this device is used and what they do is inside this device they simply short neutral and the earth together which is a violation of the rule minimum insulation resistance between a current carrying conductor and the earth or the protective conductor inside an electrical installation is 1 meg ohm such devices are violating the rules neutral circulating current will flow through earth conductor which will create problems of fire shock hazard unnecessary arcings and finally failure of electronics so such devices i would recommend please don't use it's a violation of electrical safety rule in the first day i also explained about uh, the regulations uh, 14 15 and 16 which is from the cea regulation which talks about uh, earth the conductor and earth the neutral conductor why i am repeating this is uh, there were a lot of questions uh, last in the last week plus i was getting a lot of emails from uh, engineers working in the utility companies uh, asking how to interpret this particular point so uh, in order to interpret uh, my request is we should uh, start reading the cea regulation 2010 then also read the uh, IE rule 1956, so then also go back to the 1937 uh, uh, electricity rule 1937 and uh, we have to little bit read the regulations of uh, the British uh, during 1940s or 1950s, then we will be able to find out uh, the actual definition and uh, you know the whole history of this. Earth the conductor is uh, a TNS system, the fifth conductor in the distribution is the earth the conductor. Regulation 14, 15 and 16 says uh, it is the responsibility of the utility company to provide uh, earth the conductor means TNS or earth the neutral conductor which is a TNCS network. In a TNCS network uh, the uh, provision of uh, making the earth terminal, earth the terminal, it's not an earth the terminal, earth terminal earth the terminal means a terminal here where i am moving the cursor a terminal which is connected to the neutral of the source so for this whole power supply earth is the point that which current carrying one of the live conductor is connected to earth so this is the earth for the whole power supply the earth terminal at the consumer premise is connected back to the neutral of the source. So this earth terminal is called as earth terminal. It's regulation 14, 15 and 16 uh, request or demand for earth terminal at the consumer premise by the electricity supplier. This is very, very important because you have a very low fault loop impedance path there is a fault return path metallic fault return path in case of tns there is a direct path in case of a tncs there is a link so as a result of the direct metallic fault return path the fault current goes back very quickly to the source enough fault current goes and your cut out uh, the fuse will disconnect the supply similarly regulation 41 also talks about the uh, earthing of the neutral conductor at the distribution. So I am showing some of the regulations here. Uh, similarly, the IS732 figure uh, 61 explains how to make uh, the distribution board in a consumer premise in case of a TNCS system. This picture is actually followed uh, worldwide. Whatever the picture which I am showing, the three methods of making the uh, electricity distribution board or the mains incoming uh, DB for a consumer premise. This picture is from the IEC 60364 part uh, 554. So basically globally, this is what is followed. 
uh, but uh, as i said in my first presentation what is happening is uh, you can see here in the where i'm moving the cursor the earthed conductor is uh, missing in our distribution the electricity supplier is not providing any earthed conductor as a result uh, uh, the link between uh, you know the the neutral and the earth is also missing in a tncs network so basically the network becomes a tt network in a tt network uh, you require a 30 milliampere rcd at the origin of installation and you will have additional other problems as well uh, whereas uh, if you look at uh, uh, medium size uh, industry where they have well, let us say 50 60 kilowatt of uh, connected load a low voltage lt supply uh, working with a 30 milliampere RCD at the origin of installation probably may not work because of inherent leakage current of the devices. So these violations, actually, these are uh, some of the reason for accidents at the consumer premise. Basically, there is a fault. You can imagine the consumer is having some kind of problem. There is a fault and the protective device is supposed to trip uh, it is the responsibility of the power supplier, energy supplier to ensure that uh, the consumer premise is protected. Of course, the consumer also have certain responsibilities, uh, but it doesn't mean that the responsibility is only with the consumer, but the supplier is also having a responsibility. And that is the purpose of making the regulations. All these regulations are violated, 14, 15, 16, very, very important, I would say. Uh, I would repeat that ideally these violations shall be treated as a criminal offense by the management of the supply company. So why I put as management of the supply company is most of the time the last uh, uh, fellow, the last person who goes for inspection, maybe the lineman or the, the smallest employee is, uh, the, 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 he is made the victim of such uh, failures of uh, complying, compliance and you know they are put into trouble. Actually, in my word, uh, you know, this is uh, the responsibility of the management. In order to achieve, uh, 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 you know, uh, the uh, safety, electrical system is, which is called a system earthing, are classified into earthed system and unearthed system. Uh, it is in the technical terms, it is called as a TNC system, TNS system, TNCS system, TT system, and there is one more IT, which is used for special application. IT is an unearthed system which can be used for a specific location in order to achieve safety uh, uh, and uh, continuity of the supply. Especially the earth system called as a TN or TT system, supply must be disconnected to achieve safety. Whereas in case of an IT system, supply can be continued to uh, 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 IT system, supply can continue uh, until the first fault, during the first fault. The biggest uh, misinterpretation happening in India is, uh, I always call it as a joke, uh, two for neutral, two for body. There is nothing called a two for neutral, two for body. It is a totally um, big mistake, uh, totally wrong. You should not follow this particular concept. You will invite a problem. Similarly, uh, the system like uh, clean earth means uh, connecting the earthing of all the electronic items together, connecting it to an earth electrode in soil, power items connecting separately to an earth electrode in soil, lightning protection separate is also a big mistake. Please don't follow it. Uh, similarly, separate uh, earthing, but everything under soil interconnected uh, together as a grid or a, as a ring. This is also a big uh, mistake. Please don't follow it. This is not what is told in the standard. What is the correct way of uh, earthing of a generator? You can see here the uh, picture 38 to 41 of IS3043. The uh, DG, the, the uh, body and the alternator, both bodies are interconnected together to an earth electrode, uh, uh, not to an earth electrode, sorry, to a bus bar, an earth bus bar. Neutral also connected to a bus bar. The incoming EB supply, earthing TNCS is also connected to the bus bar. The load side earthing is also connected to the earthing, earth bus bar. So this is the correct way of earthing. This means uh, different uh, metallic exposed and extraneous conductive parts in your building must have interconnection, not under the soil, but above the soil, a physical connection. So this is the correct way of earthing. Now, 
the regulation this also last uh, program i explained uh, the regulation uh, uh, chapter 5 regulation 33 and the 30 talks about uh, testing of an electrical installation by the supplier of course this is applicable for the supplier energy supplier supplier should test before connecting he should test and ensure that the the here you can see 1 mega ohm the insulation resistance between live parts and the earth or the protective conductor must be minimum 1 mega ohm somebody asked a question just before on the chat box Uh, which i just uh, in the q and a which i just answered uh, uh, the uh, while testing uh, uh, the gentleman has got about uh, 2150 mega ohm whether this is sufficient or not uh, yes of course uh, more than 1 mega ohm is uh, accepted now uh, periodic inspection by the utility every 5 years is also recommended in the regulation of course uh, uh uh these are also you know not uh, followed properly if these regulations are followed properly lot of accidents can be stopped because you know the mistakes well in advance now a lot of utilities uh, this uh, is a little bit new i am what i'm going to talk is a little bit new because last uh, one week or last two weeks i have got lot of uh, uh, phone calls and emails regarding the uh, what a utility should do Uh, to in order to ensure safety of the consumer premise and uh, most of the time a common subject which i am fighting this is what i am trying to explain to you the methods followed by the uh, utility uh, or the industries example for an application of a transformer 11 kv by 400 volt transformer uh the uh, people wanted to make a test they believe that uh, making the soil resistivity test earth electrode resistance uh, test uh, plus uh, touch and step voltage riser integrity gravel resistivity and a long list of test uh, a lot of engineers uh, are asking uh, us or me to support them to make uh, these test like step voltage riser integrity gravel resistivity and all those things and they wanted to do the test as per I triple E eighty, I triple E eighty one, B S seven six seven one, B S seven four seven seven four three zero, and all. Unfortunately, uh, only a little bit uh, about the Indian standards are uh, requested for. I don't know why our engineers, Indian engineers, always wanted to go behind uh, the American and the British standard in order to test an Indian installation. Uh, these actually, uh, the the uh, Indian standards are much more clearer and much more better. i would like to explain a small example in america the electricity distribution to houses are hvds high voltage distribution system what does it mean is on the right side you can see i have put a transformer with a 20 kv input supply and 120 or 240 120 phase to neutral and 240 phase to phase supply to the consumer premise and the example a pole top transformer basically the electricity distribution is happening at 20 kv and every house or probably a group of house have got a, a transformer and the transformer is generally a very small transformer which is connected very closer to the load as a result you know the voltage drop at the consumer premise is minimized to a low level and this 20 kv it actually starts from a substation and this substation the primary voltage is either 66 kv or even higher sometime 132 kv bar 20 kv so according to the american uh, system uh, or uh, the system uh, in usa what they do is uh, this substation means the primary voltage is either 132 kv or 66 kv secondary voltage is 20 kv this substation they make uh, the touch and the step potential reduction measures as per ieee 80 this is a very good system because the definition is very clear they know what a substation looks like and they know their system and they do the best the touch and step voltages are reduced based on ieee 80 and now the problem which we face is our system is little bit different than their system i'm sorry i have put 66 bar 20 kv this is actually a cut and paste mistake it is you can think that it's an 11 kv we have a distribution of 11 kv and our transformers are comparatively larger in size 
it is not uh, 10 kilo 10 kv or 20 kv but these are larger uh, uh, transformers and one transformer probably is supplying to several consumers uh, like uh, for example uh, 100 houses 200 houses and so so uh, that much and the line length is uh, long for public distribution and short for uh, industrial distribution now under this circumstance what we are doing the biggest mistake is we are trying to make an earth grid for this transformer as per ieee 80 we wanted to make an earth grid gravel resistivity test touch voltage step voltage test or the uh, and you know the all the test as per or all the safety measures uh, as per ieee 80 we wanted to implement for this small transformer this is a misinterpretation of our system. If you go as per the American standard, you should understand what exactly they are doing and we should do it. Don't try to apply the, the American system for our 11 kV transformer. For 11 kV transformer, these are actually not applicable. The IS3043 class number 27.2.4, it very clearly has written. In the case of an EHT substation where there is possibility of ground potential attaining very high values of the order of 5 kV and above, in the event of an earth fault, the earth grid design should be based on the tolerable limit of potential gradient in the substation area and the step and touch potential due to fault condition. So basically, this clause says you must do these touch and step voltage uh, 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 you know, safety measures for EHT substations means above 33 kV. However, this uh, the definition of EHT itself is nowadays a little bit conflict. This clause in IS3043 is existing for more than uh, 20, 25 years. So I took the definition from the IE rule 1956 because this clause is originally before 2010. So uh, according to the definition at that point, point of time, 33 kV and or not 33 actually more than 33 is an EHT supply so touch and step potential reduction measures with respect to the IEEE 80 standard is necessary for EHT substations this is the simple definition but for modern uh, uh, industrial and commercial buildings uh, with uh, high voltage or extra high voltage supplies uh, the complete earthing arrangement can be made possible by a very, very modern method, which is called as global earthing system. Global earthing system, it, uh, the, the name looks very fancy, but uh, the advantage of this global earthing system is literally there is no touch voltage exist. So I was testing uh, two weeks back, I was testing an installation where they have a 220 kV substation. 220 bar 22 kV and the 22 kV distribution goes to eight uh, buildings and they each uh, these buildings, each uh, of these buildings, they have a 22 kV bar 400 volt transformers because this is a data center. So they have a lot of uh, load, uh, I think about 75 megawatt. Uh, the uh, touch voltage which we got, uh, the result of the test is less than 2.1 volt in comparison to the tolerable limit of more than probably 600 or 800 volt that is the limit but the actual test to touch voltage was less than 2.1 volt a global earthing system is an earthing system which is achieved by interconnecting every exposed and extraneous conductive parts in a building you make a maximum interconnection as a result the touch and step voltages do not exist in the building similarly for uh, uh, the same system, if you go for a mesh bonding met network, a BN network for uh, electronic apparatus, you will achieve a very high degree of safety for your electronic device. So this is the most modern method which is recommended in the IEC standard. Of course, in this kind of a system, uh, there is no earth pit, there is no vertical earth electrodes in the soil. Uh, of course, sometime it is required, but uh, not like uh, 200 numbers, 500 numbers and all probably three, four, five numbers. But uh, uh, the biggest advantage of this system is uh, touch voltage is uh, nearly negligible and your devices, you will get a very, very high degree of safety. This is uh, recommended in IEC standard IEC 61936. Uh, an equivalent Indian standard is under uh, 
preparation by the ETD 19, probably within a few months, this standard also will be published. Uh, if we get it, uh, probably uh, the, the concepts start changing. Uh, with respect to utility companies, uh, the utility, one of the responsibility of the utility is the first responsibility, which I told you, in case of any problem, any fault on the consumer premise, the incoming fuse must disconnect within the time specified in the standard. Number two, the utility also should take care that uh, the fault on the high voltage system on the left hand side what i am showing is duration of earth fault in the high voltage system of course uh, 11 kv transformer in case of a fault on the 11 kv side at the 230 volt side a temporary over voltage will appear and that temporary over voltage there are two conditions the disconnection time less than five seconds and greater than or equal to uh, greater than five seconds or less than or equal to five seconds there are two disconnection times Greater than five seconds is uh, an indication that the high voltage 11 kV side of the, the high voltage uh, feeder uh, or the high voltage transformer, it is an unearthed system. Less than or equal to five seconds is applicable for a earthed system. Imagine an earthed system, 11 kV side is going to disconnect in case of a fault at a time lesser than five seconds, lesser than or equal to five seconds. Under that condition, the maximum voltage the maximum over voltage which is allowed inside a consumer premise must be limited to less than 1200 volt or the maximum must be limited to 1200 volt more than 1200 volt the utility shall not allow inside a consumer premise because consumers are having devices which cannot withstand such voltages so it is the full responsibility of the consumer uh, of the energy supplier but uh, uh, you know, I had a lot of discussion uh, with uh, electricity supply companies, but this particular requirement, uh, anyway, it is not there on the regulation, but uh, it is there on the code of practices. But, uh, you know, uh, the awareness is quite less. Uh, the touch voltages, uh, the IEC way, IEC 61936, uh, it is explaining uh, the touch voltage, permissible touch voltage. You can also find this chart table in the uh, uh, IS732, the, the permissible touch voltage followed in IEC and IEEE, you, you will be able to see a little bit difference, but practically both are almost the same. Uh, uh, what IEC recommends is uh, a fault of less than, you know, or equal to 65 volt or within 10 seconds, the fault must be reduced. The touch voltage must be reduced to 65 volt. Why I am showing this picture is this is a mandatory electrical safety requirement and sometimes the utilities are ensuring it. It is not the consumer uh, who has to ensure it, it is the utility. I will explain how this is uh, done by the utility. Now disconnection time. Almost every developed nation, what I'm showing in the picture is you have the distribution transformer, you have a, a consumer premise which is having a meter, then inside the consumer premise, you have the distribution and finally the fixed equipment and the portable devices connected to this particular uh, installation. Now, the disconnection time during a fault on the distribution is the responsibility of the distribution company. Most of the nations have made regulations and fixed this particular disconnection time. Example, in a TN system, Maximum is 60 minutes. Within one hour, in case of any fault, the HT supply must be uh, disconnected. And, uh, you know, the, this kind of regulations are made and they follow. Whereas in India, unfortunately, this is not uh, very much followed. As a result, a uh, lot of accidents are happening. So please understand that uh, in case of fault, you cannot leave the circuit uh, under faulty condition for a longer time. The maximum allowed times are in the final circuit, uh, 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 in case of TN system, 0 0.4 second, and in case of TT system, 0 0.2 second. At the main distribution circuits inside the consumer premise, after the meter, it can be in case of TN system up to five seconds, uh, or uh, in case of TT, it is less than one second. These voltage, these disconnection times are applicable for up to 230 volt. But now, when we talk about electricity supply companies, a big uh, 
discussion starts happening they say our supply is not 230 it is 240 yes of course if your supply is 240 then the disconnection time is even smaller in case of a 240 volt supply the tn system disconnection time is 0 0.2 second and tt is 0 0.07 second that you know defining the voltage is having a little bit of risk here similarly Another important subject which is under the scope of the energy supplier, which is most of the time creating trouble in the consumer premise is called as installation category or over voltage category. What does it mean is you have the transformer, you have the meters, then you have the fixed part of the installation, then you have the connected apparatus. Now, Every electrical apparatus at the mains incoming must be of category four, means uh, a 230 volt device uh, must withstand a minimum six kV voltage impulse. At the fixed part of the installation, category three means uh, a 230 volt device must withstand a minimum four kV voltage impulse or 4000 volt impulse. Connected device such as uh, apparatus, uh, which, which we use at our houses, these are category two. A 230 volt device must withstand 2.5 kV. This is also an indication that this, this voltage, say for example, 2.5 kV, this is the maximum voltage with which a portable device at our house can withstand. But imagine due to a fault on the high voltage side of the transformer, if more than 2.5 kV comes into our house, then of course our TV, fridge, and all these electrical apparatus will fail. And as a result, a lot of cases are recorded where uh, fire accidents happened. Fire accidents due to a high voltage fault at the transformer. Similarly, uh, the category one devices are also there, means a 230 volt device, which can withstand only 1,500 volt uh, 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 AC and voltage impulse. And these devices are actually not suitable for a direct connection to a public low voltage supply. Because in a public low voltage supply, during a high voltage fault, the energy supplier is free to go to a temporary over voltage up to 1200 volt plus the operating voltage 230 volt. So the actual voltage between earth and a phase conductor, it can be anything 1430 volt up to five seconds. This is allowed in the standard and the utility is not supposed to send more than this voltage into a consumer premise. So this is a very much there. So category one device, we are not supposed to connect directly to a public LV supply, but this is the, you know, these requirements are there in the standard, but only few of the consumers follow it. Category one device, one of the example is some of the variable frequency drives, some of the power supplies, they are category one. Technically, they, we are not supposed to connect it to the uh, energy supplies, uh, direct supply. We are supposed to have an electrical separation in between. And uh, uh, this, uh, you know, what uh, I wanted to explain to you is uh, electrical equipment are classified into class one. Class one means an equipment, uh, uh, example, a motor. In case of an insulation failure inside the motor, its body becomes exposed uh, uh, to a voltage. And if somebody touches this particular uh, body, he will get a shock. And what the manufacturer says, uh, the manufacturer's responsibility is he has to make an earth terminal of that particular equipment. And he has to put uh, either the number 5019 or let us be or color combination green and yellow. This is the symbol uh, of protective earthing. And now, most important, what the consumer must do is once when you buy a class one equipment and once when you connect it to your building or to your uh, installation, you must do protective earthing. What is protective earthing is connect this terminal. This terminal means the terminal of that class one equipment to the protective equipotential bonding system of the installation then people will be uh, trying to find out what exactly is this protective equipotential bonding. Let me skip these two parts. You can find this picture in IS3043. 
i think picture number 14 or 15 i don't remember the uh, number exactly so it shows uh, uh, you know in the is standard it's a black and white picture i put uh, as a color so you can see the building and this uh, the green uh, line which is running all around uh, item number 1 this is uh, the protective equipotential bonding number 1 the the green ring equipotential bonding conductor the old name is equipotential bonding conductor but the new names are it is either an met main earthing terminal or a protective earth conductor now interestingly you see in the is standard 1965 onwards this is written in case of small domestic installation one takes the one takes one is taken from the neutral link sorry there is some small mistake one is taken from the neutral link that means it is a tncs uh, system so basically what this picture says is m stands for exposed conductive parts means major three phase electrical apparatus these three phase electrical apparatuses are connected or earthed protective earth protective earthed to the equipotential bonding system of your building by duplicate connection number 2 protective conductor in duplicate this is actually double earthing what double earthing means is you have a protective equipotential bonding in your building and you are buying a new motor the motor earth terminal must be connected to the equipotential bonding system with the two connections for redundancy this is the double earthing it has nothing to do with the two earth pits in soil every building must have a protective equipotential bonding which is uh, written everywhere in the standards and regulations uh, protective equipotential bonding is created by interconnecting various exposed and extraneous conductive parts in the building i all often explain this uh, uh, picture so people know this picture very well uh, you have an met means a big bus bar which is uh, the zero reference of the whole building and uh, all the metallic parts exposed and extraneous parts must be connected to this particular bus bar and the bus bar is connected to an earth electrode in case of a tt system and to the neutral of the system neutral of the source in case of a tn system and this is whole thing is together called as protective equipotential bonding so protective earthing means uh, you should connect your motor or your you should connect your class 1 apparatus uh, to your protective equipotential bonding that is called as protective earthing it has nothing to do with uh, the earth electrode in soil is732 the picture number 68 i believe uh, you can see this kind of a picture what does it mean is you have a building uh the rebar this green uh, at the center is nothing but the rebar an indication of the rebar then you have an met and all the incoming services such as power supply telephone line cable tv gas and water all these incoming services metallic services are connected to the equipotential bonding system this is very much necessary and this bonding system has got uh, three purposes purpose number 1 is reducing the shock voltage uh, of simultaneously accessible metallic parts inside the building number 2 in case of any lightning over voltage coming through this particular line the over voltages are limited to a lim minimum and number 3 which is very important whenever there is a fault on the high voltage side of the distribution transformer and if the network is a tncs or a tns network the shock voltage inside the consumer premise due to the high voltage fault is also minimized because of this protective equipotential bonding so it's very important that in some countries this kind of protective equipotential bonding it is ensured by the energy supplier so while checking uh, they also ensure that the the interconnection the equipotential bonding is made properly whereas in our case you know the regulation says uh, regulation 33 says you should uh, uh check the insulation resistance and uh, every 5 years you should check but uh, that basic itself is uh, missing the selection of conductors and the protective device at the final circuit very very important lot of places uh, uh, recently about uh, uh, a week back i was discussing with uh, one of the uh, uh, customer then i asked okay on what basis uh, you are selecting the wire and the mcb then they told uh, we if we have a chiller of let us say 
uh, which require 32 amps uh, current then we put uh, 63 amps mcb and we put a wire of uh, you know wire which can handle uh, maybe 35 amps of uh, current so which is absolutely uh, not the correct way you should follow this uh, particular the calculation in the standard you should select the wires based on the uh, withstanding capacities and you know it is not uh, uh, an easy task with which you can calculate something by your uh, fingers and do it not possible you have to be uh, technically uh, you should understand the subject and you should do the selection properly also people always think that an mcb in case of any problem mcb will trip which is also not correct an mcb any type of mcb b c or d if the uh, uh, that the current is 1.13 times of the nominal uh, rated current 10 amps say for example i uh, put the 10 amps uh, is the current of the mcb up to 11.3 amps the mcb need not have to trip up to 1.45 times uh, its rated current mcbs of uh, less than or equal to 63 amps it can take up to 1 hour to trip higher than 63 amps less than you know it can take up to 2 hours to trip this also means your wiring must be able to withstand a higher current up to this duration example the wiring must withstand 1.45 times the current for 1 hour for circuits lesser than or equal to 63 amps and for circuits greater than 63 amps minimum 2 hours the next uh, disconnection part of a bic and a d type uh, mcb is uh, a over current of 2.55 times uh, you know up to 33 32 amps an mcb of uh, less than or equal to 32 amps it can take anything between 1 second to 60 seconds higher than 32 amps it can take 1 second to 120 seconds 2 minutes to trip and uh, in case of uh, you know quick disconnection within 0.1 second then uh, b type mcb should have a minimum five times its rated current uh, during uh, the the fault or the overcurrent uh, c type 10 times uh, d type 20 times so based on this uh, uh, you know uh, five times 10 times and 20 times the fault loop impedances will come into picture uh, because in a tn system we are supposed to use uh, mcb as the primary earth fault protective device uh, of course the rcds are additional protective device so this one is actually related uh, to the the uh, uh, disconnection time but don't think that an mcb by putting an mcb in case of any problem immediately it will trip no not like that it takes its own time to trip similarly voltage drop voltage drop the maximum voltage drop inside a consumer premise is set by the standard lot of uh, uh, engineers try to interpret as uh, oh ho, you look the lighting load in case of a public uh, uh, electricity supply lighting load only three percentage uh, even if it is four five six percentage nothing happens this is what people think uh, in case of a low voltage supply from our own transformer up to six percentage voltage drop is allowed in case of lightning but uh, a lighting load but people sometimes interpret as even if the six percentage is uh, you know instead of six if it is even seven eight percentage uh, uh, my lights are able to work because my light uh, is able to work uh, with uh, 230 plus or minus uh, 20 percentage for example so as a result people try to uh, you know not uh, see these requirements seriously as a result what happens is uh, these calculations are also very well included in the is 732 standard i am showing you a picture figure 98 from is 732 how to select uh, the wire uh, for a three phase system of course uh, uh, say for example uh, 2.5 square mm of wire 16 amps you can use up to 70 meters but it is for three phase application for single phase application uh, 2.5 square mm see 2.5 square mm of wire uh, the maximum cable length is 70 16 amps you can use for three phase whereas for single phase you can maximum use it for 35 uh, uh, meters you know all these what, what, why i am showing this is all these uh, uh, calculations must be followed properly I skip this one. The cross-sectional area of neutral conductor, which is 
also equally important but often people think that neutral is not important so if the phase is a 6 square mm let us use a 2.5 square mm for neutral conductor and 2.5 square mm for earth conductor which is actually wrong the neutral uh, why i said made this statement is uh, about 6 months back uh, i saw this in a hospital uh, especially the wiring which is going to a very critical uh, place the phase conductor was uh, 10 square mm copper and the neutral conductor was uh, about uh, uh, 4 square mm and all the equipment are uh, uh, single phase. Of course, uh, the neutral conductor shall have the same size of the uh, phase conductor for single phase circuits and multi-phase circuits where the cross-sectional area, if the size of the phase and phase is uh, uh, you know, up to 16 square mm copper, then the neutral also must be 16 square mm. More than that, you know, we can, uh, there are some excuses. So you also should consider harmonics in case of uh, a single, uh, in case of the neutral conductor. Single phase, uh, single core cable with armored with the steel wire and tapes are not uh, to be used in AC circuit. Uh, conductors of AC circuit installed in ferromagnetic enclosure shall be arranged so that the conductors of all the phases and the neutral conductor uh, and the appropriate protective uh, conductor of each circuit are contained within the same enclosure. Of course, these are the additional requirements. Now, while selecting the MCB, the steps which uh, you are supposed to follow is number one, estimation of the connected load in kilowatt and uh, first you should find out what is the current requirement, uh, also the starting current, then selection uh, uh, of the type uh, of the MCB, because the first one is the uh, load requirement, then we should select the protective device. Third, we should select the wire, including its length, voltage drop, condition of installation, and the derating factors, and so on. Then you also should consider estimation of earth fault and short circuit loop impedance and the prospective short circuit currents because your device is supposed to trip in case of a trouble. Uh, applying diversity factor on the final uh, dBs and uh, selection and, and uh, of the incoming uh, circuit breaker of the uh, you know income the rating of the incoming circuit breaker you can apply the uh, uh, the uh, demand factor and you can diversity factor and you can select this is the step you are supposed to follow uh, why I showed this is uh, most of the time oversized devices are used which is also one of the reason for non-disconnection of the supply, which is resulting in accidents. Uh, voltage drop. In a lot of cases, uh, a higher voltage drop means a higher impedance. So if the standard is saying you must limit the voltage drop to 6% for lighting load, uh, if you have your own transformer, you should not cross that. If you cross, this means that the impedance is higher, it will lead to higher disconnection time because the fault current or the uh, short circuit current is less, uh, the higher disconnection time will come into picture and you are actually compromising safety. Similarly, a higher voltage drop is also an indication, a uh, voltage between neutral and earth, a high voltage uh, potential difference between neutral and earth, let us say eight volt between neutral and earth is an indication of uh, voltage drop of up to 16 volt in a single phase installation. So if you measure something, uh, eight volt between neutral and earth at one point of an installation, so at that point of the installation, the uh, single phase equipment, it's an indication that the single phase equipment at that location, that particular place is having a voltage drop of up to 16 volt, which is actually, you know, we are going to the limits. We are not supposed to have that much voltage drop. now. Higher voltage drop or higher voltage difference, not a drop in fact, higher voltage difference is also considered as due to poor earthing. This technique also can be used to find out whether the system is TT or TN. Most often in case of a TT system with a very unreliable earth electrode or loose contacts, sometimes the, uh, the uh, earth to neutral, protective conductor to neutral voltage is either unstable or very high voltage. Of course, we are not supposed to follow TT system. As per our regulation, we are supposed to follow TN system. So what I wanted to tell you is voltage drop is also a very uh, a good way of finding out uh, the probable 
causes of uh, problems in the future. Uh, electronic equipment manufacturers such as UPS and lift vendors and all, they say that uh, a higher voltage of neutral to earth, uh, you know, 10 volt between neutral and earth or 8 volt between neutral and earth is the reason for the failure of their equipment, which is actually not correct. Uh, uh, an 8 volt uh, between neutral and earth uh, in a lift, of course, in the drive of the lift is an indication that uh, it is a TT system, and in case of any problem, the MCB is not going to trip. That is the way we should interpret it. So, uh, in fact, the neutral to earth voltage of up to 50 volt between neutral and earth in a good system uh, is supposed to not uh, create any problem because neut between neutral and earth, we are supposed to have one mega volt uh, uh, voltage difference. Somebody is writing, my voice is breaking. I don't know how it is uh, happening. Uh, sorry for that. Now, the voltage drop in foreign countries, how they think about voltage drop is, uh, say for example, I'm saying our voltage is 230 plus or minus 10 percentage. You just take an example. What they say is, uh, at the transformer, if you put the tapping to the maximum, your voltage output at the transformer is 230 plus 10 percentage, you can make it in order to ensure that the last consumer during the peak hour is able to get 230, uh, 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 you know, minus 10 percentage. The last consumer, you should, you must supply a voltage up to, you know, 230 minus 10 percentage, not more than that. Uh, you know, lesser voltage is a problem to the consumer premise. So the minimum voltage at the consumer premise is 230 minus 10 percentage. So the transformer 230 plus 10 percentage, consumer premise 230 minus 10 percentage. It means a customer who is at uh, X distance, his voltage is actually stable. It may be 230, for example, the first consumer always his voltage is 230 plus 9 percentage. And probably another customer is always 230 minus 9 percentage. So what, how we should start reading these requirements are, imagine I have my house, which is uh, probably, you know, 200 meters from the transformer. At morning, I get a 230 plus 10 percentage voltage and at the evening, I get 230 minus 10 percentage voltage. This is not accepted. So this, we should start reading that this uh, plus or minus 10 percentage, we should uh, 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 read in such a way that uh, uh, we should read in such a way that the transformer secondary side tapping maximum 10 percentage, the end user, the last consumer should get a 10 percentage minus. Also, I told you last time, uh, the energy classification, any connected equipment lesser than or equal to 15 watts uh, during a fault or during an overcurrent or it is not supposed to ignite fire. And uh, 100 watts, of course, uh, it may create under some condition more than 100 watts is a little bit danger. But now, uh, if you are able to disconnect the supply within three seconds, of course, you achieve safety from fire less than five seconds or you know maximum five seconds uh, uh, and limited to less than 100 watts. Uh, probably uh, it is still safer, but uh, exceeding the limits of five seconds and 100 watts is always uh, risky. Uh, this means that uh, if we analyze the fire uh, accidents and if it is really from the uh, short circuit, these are some of the techniques which, which, which uh, can be used for analyzing the uh, circuit. Now going to my, the last part of my presentation, uh, the, uh, we have actually, we are trying to make uh, a software because uh, uh, as I said, a magic device cannot uh, bring you a solution. It is really a knowledge, lot of uh, technical points are there and it will be very difficult for one engineer to keep everything in the mind and try to follow it, which will be very difficult. So we are trying to make uh, a software which we call as solve uh, safe operation of low voltage electricity. Uh, we will be introducing this uh, very soon. We are seriously work working. So with this software, uh, we will allow uh, the uh, uh, customers to log in and they can go through the steps explained in the standards uh, and they can go through the steps which is there on the software, built in the software uh, and do your uh, testing as well as investigation. So this is uh, going to come up uh, very soon. Uh, you can uh, use this uh, platform as, uh, you know, to ensure safety. What we are trying to do is we are trying to make... Uh, uh, 
uh, this platform to uh, give kind of some kind of design support with respect to safety related issues not uh, you know all the design things of a low voltage electrical system but only the safety related points then we are trying to make a trainings out of it then verification of basic drawings plus compliance to standards support during erection and all these points as i you know hold we are trying to include in this particular software most probably we will be coming it uh, making it or launching it probably uh, within a month so by this uh, i would like to stop uh, the presentation uh, thank you very much for the for listening to me you can also note down my email address and uh, mobile number in case of any doubts or clarification please don't hesitate to mail me my email address is gk@kpindia.net my mobile number is 9962522244 actually 544 i put that is a mistake uh, 2244 is the correct number i am sorry for that uh, yeah let me remove it so you can note down and uh, you can don't hesitate to but most of the time uh, i may not attend the phone calls but i am always available in uh, chats or uh, whatsapp or whatever you can use it and uh, we can uh, answer to you so by this uh, i would like to stop uh, thank you very much and over to you mr dominic